sewers. This is the Turtle Power Podcast. This is your audio source for all the news, reviews, and insight into the world of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now join your hosts, Brian, Alex, and Darby. Bossa Nova! Bossa Nova? Chevy Nova? Excellent! Now it's time for the Turtle Power Podcast. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. It's been too long, definitely too long, since the last episode of the Turtle Power Podcast, but we've got everyone here. We've got, we are here. We are here in force to talk about all the news, reviews, and insight into the world of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's right, I am your host, Ryan, and uh, back with me, as always, Alex and Darby. Alex, uh, how you doing, man? Oh, oh my goodness, what is it? What's that sound? Oh, That's sorry, sound. that was my, um, that was my text message sound on my phone. I changed it to the Monty Python scene where the guy gets shot with the arrow and says, message for you, sir, right, as he dies. Actually, he doesn't die, he's actually okay. I see fight. Darby showing off his professionalism. M- merely a good. flesh wound, right? <laughs> I- I'm sorry. Is there a better text message sound than the dude getting shot by the arrow in Monty Python, the Holy Grail? <laughs> I can't think of one right now. <laughs> right? I mean, I, I tried Mikey's <laughs> Booyaka shot, but I got really annoyed with that after like three messages, so I had to change that. That, that does happen. Yeah. I, uh, I have the, uh, the, the, the Halo, uh, Halo sound. Uh, yeah. I can't even do it. I still think. I was gonna say, how's that sound go again? <laughs> <laughs> Mine's still uh, Darth Vader breathing. Yeah, that's just I'm creepy. Pretty, of I'm pretty sure that's just you busting a nut. Like if it. that went off in the middle of the night, I'd be like, somebody is like standing at the foot of my bed right now with a scuba Mess- tank. <laughs> with a scuba oh. tank, right? <laughs> with a scuba, scuba tank. Okay. That's the only, that, you, hey, wait, you guys can get off without breathing through a scuba tank? Jealous. <laughs> Well, uh, we are back uh, celebrating, continuing our celebration of the 30th birthday of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And uh, me. Uh, and me. <laughs> and Alex. Ryan, haven't you figured it out yet? It's all about me and Alex, okay? Ryan's just an old fucker, so he doesn't he, know. He is. He is. God. I never realized that. So I'm one year older than Darby, and Darby's one year older than Alex. I'm a year and a half younger than you. Don't don't try to pull me in there hey, with hey, you, Ryan. Hey, don't... Enough with this half stuff. Right. Do you have any uh, any white hairs on your balls yet? Um, <clears throat> I shaved mine, so I really don't know. You Ooh. would. Prove well, it. you know, I'm not I'm not married Prove like it. you two guys. <laughs> Prove I'm, it. I'm not, I'm not married like you two guys. So you know, got to keep it smooth sailing down there. Hey man. <laughs> I like I like to keep it just high enough to where it's really prickly, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Started things on a high note today Ladies with gentlemen. the Turtle Power Podcast. <laughs> this is hey, why you tune into the Turtle work. Power Podcast. <laughs> well, I celebrated the uh, 30th birthday of the TMNT by visiting the home of the art of ninjutsu. That's right. I, I I did get a chance to go over to Japan. Uh, I went for work. Let's let's not pretend like I have enough money to actually afford quick, a trip. Quick quick question, right? Quick question, right? Yeah, he that. went he went for work, but he all I saw was Tokyo Disney. That's all I saw. <laughs> yes, that's like, correct. Oh, I went for work. Tokyo Disney I the did. entire time. I can't take you... pictures of where I was working. Well, that's fair enough. Do they in fact have ninjutsu books in the sewers in Japan? Um, they do Technically, not. Technically, he was in, have... wasn't he in New York City when he found the book? I thought he was. He was. But I just, I, I just want. He was. I just want to know if it, you know, if, if it translates over into, uh, into the origin. No, uh, you mean that's not what they use for toilet paper in Japan? How else would it be down in the sewers? <laughs> <laughs> Granted, I did not go in any Japanese sewers. 
They're probably a lot cleaner than the New York City ones. Well, then you do not live, my friend. And more efficient. There's a lot more rice. <laughs> That's that is racist. <laughs> it's not racist. It is That's not racist, racist if it's true. Yeah, it's like Wait, saying there. It's like saying there's a lot of fattening foods in America. I mean, come on. That's like saying a bunch of Asian girls always dress up in school girl outfits and do the peace sign as they go. Again, not racist if it's true because that is a totally true fact. Wow. That is everywhere in Tokyo. Not a joke. Not okay, a joke. so tell us about it, there, buddy. Um, well, we'll I try was not working. To interrupt you too I, much. I was working south of Tokyo for a week, and then I had Labor Day weekend, um, which they don't celebrate Labor Day, but we did as Americans. <laughs> so I had the day off. Uh, so I had, a, I had a three day weekend in in Tokyo. Uh, I spent one whole day in Tokyo itself, and then. Um, I spent two days in Tokyo Disneyland. One one day at Tokyo Disneyland and one day at Tokyo Disney Sea. But I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just got to point out, Ryan, that you're like, well, they don't celebrate it there. But since I do, I took the day off anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, were uh, were you too tall to to uh, to ride the rides? Right. Uh, yeah. How much did you there just tower over one ride? The Japanese there people? was one ride. I was actually right at the maximum. <laughs> <laughs> they actually had a height maximum for it. It was fantastic. Was it like the submarine ride, like the Finding Nemo no, ride? No, no. It was uh, just a little roller coaster, and it wasn't so much the height. It was actually the the distance. It was like leg length. Actually, it was the distance from like your hip to your knee, because it was made for people that do don't have long legs. It was made for people with big so Japanese legs. people. Are you trying to knock on us, Ryan? No, not at all. Behemoth over here, Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's one huge bitch. All right. So, uh, but. <laughs> I wish I could see Ryan just surrounded by a bunch of like four feet tall Asian people. Dude. I'm sorry. Did you bring Dude, it home? no, seriously. Like, that's was... exactly what it was. It was like, I just walked through Tokyo and everyone's just like, look at this freak. <laughs> <laughs> and then you found like the one, I mean, I know he's Chinese, but you found like the one Yao Ming dude that lives in Tokyo that, that just towers I over. I did. Him. I saw <laughs> one guy. One. <laughs> Japanese guy that was like six eleven or something. And you're like, was, where the was, hell did you come from? Yeah. Are you a was, robot? Yeah. You're a robot, aren't you? And and I was walking by and I was going, Geez, look at this freak. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, no, it, it was it was. I mean, you definitely felt the eyes. You know. Well, it's <laughs> funny too because I'm 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 five eight and a half, and I remember when I went to a Vietnamese nightclub in Washington D.C. and I literally just yelled out, "I'm the tallest person here." <laughs> <laughs> so like for you to go to to Japan, oh man, that that is hilarious. Well, for those of you who have never seen Ryan, he is literally six foot nine and a half. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm uh, six five. You're six six. You're, you're, no, I, it, you're, if I'm I if think I got my hair six. spiked and I got basketball shoes, maybe I'm six six. Dude, you're like six three. Fucking All I know right. is when I stand on like when I stand on like one of those things you park your car on, you know, so you don't like run into the car in front of you. Ryan is still taller than I am. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> that is very, that's a very good image, <laughs> everybody at home. <laughs> Shut up. Yet, yet he still can't play basketball. <laughs> yeah, yet he still can't dunk. Uh, hey, I used to dunk in high school. And then you tore your ACL twice in two weeks. Good job. No, it was two years. Anyway, well, <laughs> one of the highlights of my Japan trip was, uh, and you can see, you know, once again, uh, to all our new listeners, go to the show notes. Um, you can find them on our website or in the show notes of the episode itself. Uh, you'll see all the links there uh, that we'll be talking about. But one of the cool things that I found is we, we covered these, um, these little mini figures that were going to be available only in Japan. And I found them. I found them there. And uh, they were actually. Do you remember, like, when we were when we were young, and you go up to the? Um, it was like a bubble gum machine, but instead of candy that would come out, it would be like the little balls, the little plastic yeah. balls, and they'd have like, little figures or you know temporary tattoos or stickers or whatever. Well, it was one of those, and they're like everywhere. They're huge in Japan, and they all have all these little mini figures. And uh, it took a while. But I finally found the uh, the turtles one, one of the turtles ones, and uh, I got lucky and I got Raph first try. So if you didn't get me a Donatello, I swear to God, I'm just gonna walk off this set right now. And by this set, I mean my bed that I'm sitting on. 
<laughs> he so didn't get your dog. Story... Huh? <laughs> oh! <laughs> It sounds like Darby was having sex just now. I'm not sure if it was like rage sex or what that was. But, uh, it turned me out a little trying. bit. He was throwing trying. my mic down. <laughs> Outrage. Uh, no, I, I I may have something for you guys though. So. He may have not thought about it anybody but himself. I he definitely had to go kind of thought about other home. people. <laughs> he may have to go on eBay when he got home. <laughs> um, oh crap! I went all the way to Tokyo. I forgot to get those guys something. <laughs> No, I did get you guys something. I just Japan. I just haven't bought it yet. Yeah, <laughs> turtle from Japan. E Japan. I'm a tall freak of nature. eBay, enter. By the way, I am drinking from my um, new to me. I'm not sure how old it is. I think it's only like a year old, but my new uh, Mirage Turtles coffee cup. Amateurs. I'm at the uh, Orlando airport. Just randomly. Awesome. Anyway, all right. So um, we actually have a, a, a link uh, in the show notes to a, uh, uh, a story over at TMNT Entity. Uh, and uh, this is this is pretty cool. It's a, the confusing history of the TMNT in Japan. So uh, go check that out if you want to hear about the very peculiar history of, of the turtles in Japan. Because it, it's weird. Like they don't have ninjutsu, tentacles, do they? Because that could be everything. It's definitely a part of their history, and it's like a prevalent part of their history. But that is not a thing that's like, like there's no Donny. Maybe Donny. What does Donny's bow staff have tentacles? And then him in April, you know. <laughs> that is there. Well, how else would they do it? That's over there? everywhere too, by the way. What you about the Krang? I mean, the Krang uh, already have some sort of tentacles. Oh, the Krang have to be, like, the biggest yeah. stars there. I mean... Dude, you go to <laughs> I, the... The show should actually be called The Krang featuring the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> I mean... To, you go to... Um... And April is just crying in every single episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you go... Um, I'm going to post up a bunch of photos, because they... They've got the Nick Turtles toys there. It's pretty much the same ones as we have, except they've got uh, different packaging. They have um, a nice picture of April O'Neil wearing a Wolverine t-shirt, by the way. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Hey, there's Mona Lisa. There you go. Darby's checking it out right now. Apparently so. Uh, Whoa! Okay, so it's not Wolverine. It's um, Their masks apparently look like Wolverines. Yes. I'm kind of a fan of that. I'm not going to lie. Like that anime. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, if you go around to Facebook, onto our Facebook page, we'll have a uh, uh, gallery up there of all of my uh, Turtles photos from uh, from Japan. So. Oh, my God. There's a manga, and it looks like they're hanging out with Charizard. I'm not making this up. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That is. Yeah. I'm legit from, uh, not making this up right now. Yeah, you're right. That is. That's exactly what it looks like. Um, so, uh, Al Alex, uh, I, this, this is a very old post that you, you put up on Twitter, but, uh, um, I wanted, I don't think we never got a chance to talk about it was, um, you were able to, uh, uh, get a, uh, a ROM emulator on your phone mm -hmm. and, uh, you were, you were playing some Hyperstone heist and some tournament, tournament fighters, mm -hmm. uh, uh, tournament uh, fighters. How's that working out for you? <clears throat> um, Hyperstone Heist is actually great on a mobile device. It, it's seamless. It works out perfect. It's it, it plays so fluidly, and it's uh, it's great because a lot of people who had Super Nintendos didn't get a chance to play Hyperstone Heist, and I highly recommend loading or downloading uh, Dell ROMs, which is D A R O M S. And that's only um, and for then, Android, right? That is Android, because um, iPhone sucks. And um, <laughs> thank you, sir. <laughs> and and then uh, just downloading, uh, you know whichever um, emulator you want. But um, the, uh, the Tournament Fighters uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't translate uh, well, very well over uh, to the mobile device. The, it's, 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 well, it just... It just sucks. Um, <laughs> I did pick a Suka just to do the ass pound. Um, nice. And, uh, uh, it, yeah, it, the game is it's awful to play on a mobile device. I, I, I really can't even envision, envision it uh, like playing well on the Super Nintendo now that I think about it, or the Sega. It just sucks. That game sucks ass. 
it's just a Street Fighter clone, essentially, was what it was. It's not as not even close though. It's not even it's as not, good. The yeah. button, it, like, I mean, it's, it's like the move sets are they're just awful. It's that style, well, but it's it's uh, yeah, and I agree, it's not a very good game. It was. And you, know what, the like lamest, first... you know what? The lamest finishing move in that game was Wrath. Wrath had the you lamest finishing that. move in that game. I don't that. remember what his finishing move. What was it? He just he, he would just bump rush you and start this like really big combo and he would say attack every time he would attack so oh, he'd literally nice. just run in and go attack attack, attack attack and you're just like oh god rat just <laughs> shut up <laughs> it's like a bad like, it. Saturday Night Live skit and it sucks it. because there's butt. so much potential because of uh, you know the the infinite character selections that they can actually have a great <laughs> freaking uh... yeah. it said there's like eight characters to choose from and five of them were from the comics that you never saw <laughs> Exactly. Chrome Dome but that? I mean, wasn't Chrome Dome one of the characters? Chrome Dome War, War. Uh, the yeah. the butt hit girl that Alex liked to play Asuka. as yeah. Yeah. Asuka. Yeah, it's just yeah. Like you think, oh, I don't know, maybe Bebop or Rocksteady. No. Nope. Yeah. Uh, speaking of of you, Darby, what uh, what have you been up to, man? Dude, I've been forever. so freaking busy. I finally graduated from broadcasting school. Hey, so congratulations. Oh, congrats. Hey. hey. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> All Darby's been doing is smoking pot and whacking off, and he's living the life. <laughs> so is, busy, bro. I am. Been so busy. I am living the single life in Colorado, and let me tell you, it is awesome. Um, <laughs> but I have found some other stuff. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I probably posted on our Twitter more than you guys have. Oh yeah, um, you have I know you like that around. Raphael one that I put up. I thought Ryan would like that one. Yeah, that made it. <laughs> that made its way around the uh, the net. I know. Um, Twitter. Rob Paulson actually ended up tweeting out that same uh, photo. Nice, nice. Um, I mean, there's actually a guy at my school who got like this really sick tattoo of the Ninja Turtles. Now, <clears throat> it's gonna sound lame at first because they they're sort of the Michael Bay Ninja Turtles, but the way the artistry was done, I posted a picture of it. Uh, like almost a month ago, it it's a pretty freaking sweet tattoo. He doesn't have the color in it yet, but like, yeah, that was a guy at my school, and I was just like, holy crap, he's got that sweet. But other than that, I've been catching up with the turtles on Hulu because I don't have cable and I don't want cable. <laughs> Let me All tell right. you how great well, it is well, to just live off of Hulu and Netflix. By the way, now I for Hulu, do the same thing for Hulu. How how close are they? Are they like all the way up to the most recent episode? Uh, usually, yeah. Okay. I mean, I haven't caught up myself. I think the last episode I saw was, I don't know, what was the last episode that aired? Because the last episode I saw was where they went to Dimension X and found Leatherhead. Oh, that's yeah, you're, you're, uh, you're not even close. Yeah. I'm not even close? Well, I mean, that's the last one I saw. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're probably five episodes out, so. <clears throat> well, Dang. you know, to be fair, to be fair, it, it, being a, you know, pri- watching it primarily on Hulu, it makes it incredibly difficult when they break up the seasons the way they do to keep up with the turtles on streaming services yeah yeah i I, i've i've been watching some other shows as well just i mean i i recently caught up to like as far as i could go right now and it's just i turtle wise with me i mean so nothing much we'll we'll talk afterwards um um, i'm curious i'm curious what other shows are you watching darby uh, I actually finished watching Dead Man Wonderland recently, which oh. is a great Japanese anime that's only 13 episodes long right now, because they were waiting for the manga to ca- to like mm-hmm. pr- to, to produce more, so then they could write more episodes. They don't want to do what Full Metal Alchemist did and just go on their own and just completely ruin it, and then have to come up with a completely new show that's <laughs> that's closer to the manga. That's incredibly awesome. So, Dead Man Wonderland, that's great. I was watching Death Note as well. I've been on an anime kick as of late, so... I was like... Death Note is awesome. I love Cowboy Bebop. Well, no, <laughs> Cowboy Bebop is amazing. Everyone knows that. But, like, Death Note, it's on Netflix. All 26 episodes of it. Amazing. So, really? you got... Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. It's one of my favorite anime characters of all time is in it. Uh, really great cat and mouse type thing. Oh, I've also been watching a lot of The Flash. Now that The Flash is on TV... And he's my favorite superhero ever. I'm such a happy guy. So how do you feel about the Barry Allen portrayal of the Flash? Dude, they're, they're nailing it. I agree. Uh, and Barry the, the effects Allen are amazing. A, oh, yeah. The effects are amazing. Barry Allen is a nerdy dude. He's a CSI type guy. And 
And they've even got a little bit of Sherlock in there somewhere where he's like analyzing a crime scene and like stuff starts popping up. So CW knows their stuff. Maybe yep. if they could get a Ninja Turtle show, that'd be pretty sweet. But like live action Turtle show, they could do it. Oh, I mean, you know, they've had such a, uh, there's been that's been such a success in the past. As long as they bring back Venus. Then who? They can, huh? uh, you know, Venus de Milo. Who? I don't, I don't know who this character is you guys keep taking of, talking of. Turtle thighs. Turtle thighs. You know. Turtle thighs. Mona Lisa? Hashtag turtle thighs. Hashtag turtle, turtle nostrils. Thighs. Turtle nostrils? Nope. Nope. Uh, nope. Not, not, not. Venus de Milo. Huh? Huh? Anyway. So that's it. That's what's been going on with me. <laughs> well, Exciting. Um, no. Speaking of uh, other properties. Alex kind of nailed it, though, with his, with his two-sentence Cliff Notes version of what I've been doing with my life. So... <laughs> <laughs> He's like, are you watching me? <laughs> well, I, you know, I just put myself in his shoes. So what, what did I do when I was a bachelor and lived alone? Oh, that's right. I just smoked a lot of pot and beat off a lot. <laughs> and and I live in a state where weed is legal. Hmm. Yeah. Right. So you did it legally while well, as I uh, – <laughs> Yes, that's true. Uh, it, masturbation in Florida is completely illegal. So. Uh, yes. In yeah, public, apparently. Is. What the – Boyakasha! I know, right? There are beaches everywhere. I know. I was at a Toys R Us over in the, you know, <laughs> right. Ah, <laughs> jeez. All right, so. You uh, got to find the turtle toy somewhere. Oh, God. The urge sometimes. You know, all so, those little kids walking around, you get the urge sometimes. All right, speaking, so there's speaking another of, great just, scene. <laughs> fun news story. <laughs> fun news story over by, uh, by Gainesville. Uh, so, so apparently some weird-ass redneck went to Walmart and decided to. Boyakasha! A stuffed animal in the aisle and finished before he was arrested. Oh well, that's well, great. Hey, hey no finish. quitters, no quitters in Gainesville. <laughs> no quitters. Inst- you gotta finish. <laughs> he instantly told the toy that he would call it later and never really plans on doing so because he finished. <laughs> instantly felt that regret, but hey, there you go. Well, uh, there's no way to segue from that besides <laughs> just by saying, "Hey, there's another great superpower beatdown." Over on YouTube, uh, this really one great. featuring Casey Jones versus Kickass. Speaking of guys, attractive people, John Morrison. Yes, He's, John yeah. Morrison, uh, former WWE superstar, and potential maybe he'll come back. He was just on uh, Chris Jericho's uh, podcast. Uh, <laughs> They'll only bring him back if his girlfriend comes with him. Let's face it. <laughs> maybe, and only um, because she's sleeping with Batista again. You know. Yeah. I have nothing to add to this. I don't watch WWE anymore. So uh, I'll agree with Darby on this one. (laughs) It's always the best choice. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, check our show notes for the link, or I'm sure you can just go to YouTube and just look for Casey Jones versus Kick-Ass. I'm not going to ruin it. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's it's good. Good stuff. Um, More Fallout from the Turtle Power documentary. Uh, Did you guys get a chance to, uh, to get that yet? Uh, I got a chance to watch the trailer. I purchased it. I haven't watched it yet. I purchased it on Amazon. Nice. So, is it on Netflix it's a, yet? No, it's relatively inexpensive on if you have an, a Prime a Prime account or, yeah. or you know, I guess it's you don't need a Prime cheap. account, but um, it's on, on iTunes Amazon. as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's gotten great reviews. It has. It That's is great. Four stars. It, it is great. I've uh, I've gotten through about half of it so far, and. Uh, mm-hmm. The uh, I mean, it's great. First of all, I want to say before we go to anything else, um, it's been really great to see our listeners, you know, tweet us to say, you know, with with photos of them, you know, getting the documentary because, you know, those, you know, those guys, you know, that put together, you know, Randall and and I mean, his whole team, uh, they <laughs> did an absolutely amazing job with it. And uh I mean, we had them on, what was that, about a year and a half ago? And uh, so I'm just, I'm really glad to see that people are enjoying it. It's getting great reviews. Um, I think it was definitely a, a passion project for that team. So uh, I think it turned into a passion project based on the interview that we had uh, with them. And uh, Well, I, I, I wasn't yeah. going to say that, that we were the catalyst for it, but, you know, I... We were. We're We're going to take every single piece of credit we can, let's face it. By the way, while doing a search for um, Turtle Power, the definitive Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, um, on Amazon, $14.96 right now on Amazon. But 
I literally just came across this thing that says Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Raphael gift set, Blu-ray, 3D, and DVD plus digital HD of the movie that just came out. Yep. We'll get to uh, that. We'll this get title that. will be released on December 16th. Yep. Hold, hold on to that page then because uh, okay. we'll, we'll be getting to that. comes um, with Raphael because nobody will buy Raphael. It's like, well, we might as well like – Oh, package I, him up with the no, movie. Hey, I have a legit also, answer for you. Does it also come with a free pack of steroids? Oh, in AHDH, no? oh yeah, trend grow included. <sighs> well, uh, <laughs> check our show notes for an interview with Kevin Eastman where he talks about the documentary. And uh, we've also got – this is pretty cool. Uh, CBC up in Canada, uh, uh, it's a station up there. Um, and uh, Really? They, they have a show called Day 6. And uh, they were talking about the um, the documentary, and they were actually able to set up the very first interview with Kevin and Peter, like online at the same time in years. And wow. uh, uh, we're gonna share it with you. So let's go to that interview right now. Right, meow. Hold on, meow. Shell, power. 30 years ago, a new breed of superhero was born, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Comic book characters so strange, it's a mystery they caught on at all. Maybe it was the ninjutsu, or the fact that the turtles, Leonardo, Raphael, Donatello, and Michelangelo, are all named after Renaissance artists. Whatever it was, it was so weird, it worked. And three decades later, those four talking turtles remain a wildly popular franchise. Yeah! I love being a turtle! Transforming from a dark indie comic book to a huge toy and cartoon empire. A brand so big it inspired five feature films, including a recent reboot produced by Michael Bay. They're turtles. Is there anything else we should know about them? They're ninjas. Yes, to this day, those heroes in a half shell are still a potent force. And a new Canadian documentary aims to find out why the turtles are so enduring. Turtle Power traces their origins, a story that goes all the way back to their two co-creators, best friends Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. Kevin and Peter shot to fame with the turtles, but eventually fell out of touch I'm joined by both Kevin and Peter now for their first interview together in more than a decade. Kevin in San Diego, California. Peter in Amherst, Massachusetts. Gentlemen, welcome to Day 6. Thank you. Kevin, I want to start with you. You you guys sketched the world's first Ninja Turtle 30 years ago uh, while you were brainstorming with Peter. Take us back to that night. What were you thinking when you drew that first turtle? Oh, man. Pete, do you want to start, or should I? <laughs> <laughs> well, you drew it, man, so you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, um, Pete used to watch the worst TV shows in the world, in my opinion. Hey. He'd watch the A-Team. <laughs> he'd watch T.J. Hooker. And so I felt it was my duty to annoy him as much as possible when he was watching Fair his enough. favorite shows. Um, so one night I did a sketch of a, a Ninja Turtle, uh, a turtle standing upright. He had nunchucks strapped to his arms, and he had a, a mask on, and I threw it on his desk, so to, so to speak. We... We called it Mirage Studios because it wasn't actually a studio. It was our living room. <laughs> and um, and he laughed, and he did a studio one-upmanship. He did a drawing that was cooler than mine because, of course, I had to do one cooler than his. And so I penciled this drawing um, of four turtles, um, different poses, different weapons. And when he did his inking job on it, he added the logo Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and we just laughed ourselves silly. It was you know, no, well, that Peter. is essentially true. Although I, I would add that I was not the only one watching those bad TV shows. True. Enough. <laughs> but Peter, back then, as that story began to come together, and you guys sort of gelled the storyline to go along with these interesting characters, did you have any idea that that this was something that that would or could resonate with with so many people? At that point, the only thing I knew, and I think Kevin knew, was that we enjoyed it. We liked it. And whether or not anybody else would was a completely open question at that point. Um, but we something about it fired us up, and uh, you know it took us a few months, but we did it. Managed to put together, 
you know, 40 pages of art and story for our first comic book. I, I remember when those first books came out, like they were shaped differently. They <laughs> they were darker. They, they, they looked Pete, differently. Pete, why are you laughing, Peter? <laughs> why are you laughing? <laughs> but, I mean, when you think about the way people know these characters today as, as really mainstream, sort of toy-driven characters, Kevin, I've heard you quoted as, as saying those original books were, were sort of part parody, part homage. Is that true? You know, it was. I mean, you know, and, and uh, let me say that it was written in a way that was only for ourselves. Yeah. Um, so we made fun <laughs> of a lot of things. We we made things that we would love to see in a comic book, again, assuming that nobody would ever going to read this thing besides friends and family that were, you know, sort of afraid that we're going to be living in their basement for the rest of our lives. <laughs> um, I remember I went back to Cook Lobsters in Maine over the summer when Pete moved to Connecticut. When he called me about issue two and he said, people keep calling us and asking us to do issue two. And I'm like, we never thought of an issue two. Should we should do one? <laughs> to the um, extent that you guys killed off the the main nemesis in issue one, didn't you? <laughs> yes, we did. Well, we, fact, never, uh, Pete, we, we've we never thought there'd be a second issue. That. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it, it yeah. seemed to work really well for the story, you know. And we, like Kevin said, we never thought beyond that first issue. Now, the Ninja Turtles were your creation, but as, as a consumer of this stuff, you, we've seen these characters go through so many incarnations from those original books to the toys and the TV show, the movies, the first ones in the 80s and 90s. Did you ever feel, you know, protective about these characters or worry about how other people would remold them and manipulate them? Oh, definitely. The thing was, it's like um, we were very, very, very aware of... Um, our heroes like Jack Kirby and so many other guys that we kind of stand on the shoulders of that didn't own and control the rights of the characters. And so every time somebody approaches us to do something with our characters, we wanted to make sure that we had full say. What do you think it was about those days and these characters and, and whatever happened that made so many people connect so amazingly well and strong with this group of, of mutant ninja turtles? I think one of the one of the best decisions we ever made was to create that name because it always generated a second look. <laughs> yeah, you know, Teenage yeah. Mutant Ninja, what? No, you're right. It seemed like if they if they loved it or hated it after they picked it up, it was the name itself that you know made them pick it up and go like you know WTF. It's like what? <laughs> um, they'd pick it up and go, what is this? Um, that's awesome. Well, and it was fun, and it never took itself too seriously. And I think that must be at least part of of its credit as a success. I won't dispute that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do you think, had you come up with these characters in present day right now, do you think they would have been successful? I do believe that timing in, in many ways is everything. And, and we had great timing. I mean, it was not planned, but it was great timing. Um, and, you know, the, the world of comics and entertainment then is so different than what it is now. I mean, there's so many more venues for this kind of entertainment now. Back then, you know, there was no internet. The uh, direct market in the in the world of comic books, it was going full bore. But there were, you know, there were a lot. There was a lot of opportunity there that had not yet been tapped. So I don't know. I mean, setting aside as much as I can any ego here, I do have the feeling that there's something about the turtles as characters that would have sur been successful at any time in history. Maybe not in the 1800s or something, but uh, uh, any time in the history of comic books. Um, but it, it would definitely be different. I mean, it's, uh, it's really hard to say. When we told people here that we we're going to be interviewing the both of you at the same time, on the one hand, I became a very quick hero in the building. On the other hand, a lot of people couldn't believe that I was getting the two of you guys down to do this interview together. Why is that? Uh, I'm not 100% sure, uh, except that for, for a while, Kevin and I weren't really uh, talking to each other for, for a number of years. You know, as an, any uh, creative couple has, you know, we, we have had differences. And I, 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 I am happy to say that I, I think for the most part we have overcome them and, and we're, we're pals again. Pete, I thought you said it was you weren't talking. To, you weren't talking to me because it was bathing issues. I wasn't taking the shower. <laughs> um, oh, no, it's I like I didn't uh, want to make that public. <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, uh, um, 
when I look at back at, at my favorite turtle memories, nobody's going to ever take away that, you know, first, you know, three or four years before we got to run the business um, when we were just drawing comics for the love of doing comics. When you look at the movie today, do you still see yourselves in those characters? Are they still the, the characters that you guys created back there or, or have they taken on their a whole new life of their own? I feel like the heart and soul is still there of the characters that we, re- we originally created. Um, they may look different, they may act a little different, but I think, you know, Michelangelo is funny, Leonardo yeah. is the leader, Raphael's like me, Donatello's like Pete, and um, and hopefully that they're, you know, the fans are going to be the ones that are going to tell us whether they like it or not, and um, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty happy that uh, they come out for this movie, and they come out for every different version of the Turtles that we've done now for 30 years this year, so it's fantastic. You know, there, there's jump, something just really genuine about it. And, and you know, if I may, it, it's the kind of thing that can really only come from creators who are out there having fun themselves. And, you know, with this set of characters, the fun has really been infectious. So for that, I thank you. And, and for, for sharing your time with us on the radio today, it's just been wonderful to hear from you both. Our pleasure. Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird co-created the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The documentary Turtle Power was released this week. We'll have more information about it up on our website, cbc.ca slash day six. Okay, so I have a lot of trouble believing that was a Canadian TV show. They didn't say A once. Um, They didn't talk about hockey. And they didn't say hoser. Was that really a Canadian TV show? I believe it was a radio show. Was that really a Canadian radio show? I mean, I'm I'm just saying. An American host. American. 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 I like, by the way, um, real, real quick, we just came back from a, from a very brief break, uh, audience. I just want to point out that Ryan thinks that it's okay to do a silent countdown when it's radio or when it's a podcast. Hey, it's the Wayne's World thing. It's exactly. Five, it's not, yeah, because we're, we're not even doing the hangout where we could actually see each other. It's <laughs> right. Hey, I don't want to hear excuses. Do I don't want to hear excuses. In five seconds, you watch my talk. hand. I, I don't mean, care how Garth and Alex, one of these guys, is going to talk in the next five seconds. <laughs> you, you guys know how to count, right? I think you guys know how to count. <laughs> We're not aerospace engineers like you, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> giving you guys way too much credit. All right. Well, uh, uh, you know, I guess thanks to the CBC for putting that together. That was that was pretty cool to get those guys on the line at the same time. So down with cbc yeah you know me yeah i like how i like how uh, peter like specifically said yeah uh, he started talking about the name when there was such a name controversy about the movie i love that yeah yeah i also like peter being like yeah we're friends again <laughs> <laughs> well they uh they are in the documentary together so and then cue awkward joke from kevin <laughs> oh just yeah i mean man am i the only one that thinks that Kevin Eastman looks like that dude that's going to go to the nightclubs in, like, his 50s and hit on the 22-year-olds. Am I the only one that thinks that? Why would he? His wife is so... Boyakasha! God. I think it's just the way he dresses. <laughs> I'm, I'm envious. I really am. It's not even like I'm, I'm hating on the guy. I'm jealous. He's... Legit. <laughs> I can't believe we didn't ask this. I can't yeah. believe we didn't ask this. Did you have any pizza gyoza? <laughs> no, I did not. It was just regular gyoza. Yeah. Uh, but we didn't ask that at the beginning. Goiza, Gyoza, I guess you can pronounce it either way. Goiza? Uh, You're yeah. Jewish. So anyway, <laughs> uh, again, no way to segue out of this, but um, <laughs> from our last episode uh, where I was at the uh, Guinness World Record for most people dressed as uh, Ninja Turtles at the Nick Hotel, uh, we do have a video uh, link in the show notes so that you can kind of get a, a, a good idea of, of what that event was like. So that's from our friends over at inside the magic. Oh my God. We're still on page one. We have 13 more pages to go. Yep. So <laughs> let's get out of here and get into the show proper. Let's go into the news. April O'Neil channel three eyewitness news. Oh we got the news. Let's get the pop, 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 pop. Drum solo. And yep. first uh, news topic, video game news. Mm-hmm. 
Sweet. So, a uh, new video game has been announced, guys, uh, and it's, like, coming out this month. Um, TMNT Danger of the Ooze. Ooh. Now, you guys, did you guys ever get to play the first Nick Turtles video game that came out? It was only, it was the one that only came out in, like, 360 and Wii and, I think, 3DS. So, uh, no. all the systems that I don't have. Right. <laughs> Um, so I played a little bit and, and I, I don't know if you remember from my review, you know, it was all right. It wasn't, it wasn't fantastic. It was all right. But, uh, this one is, it's a Nick Turtles game, but it's, it's a different style of game. Definitely. It's a, it's a platformer, isn't it? It's yes. just a side scrolling platformer for yes. the most part. Um, yeah. we've got some, uh, it, well, here's the big thing. It's coming out to 360, 3DS and PlayStation 3. So, oh, not the not, not, not the newest no next gen. Oh, yeah, exactly. All the the old gen. Got it. Yeah, it's still old gen, but it is coming to PlayStation. So they finally figured that one out. And it is. Maybe uh, sucks, I guess. It's. <laughs> it's coming in four for, years. Coming for the PlayStation Four. All right. <laughs> yes. Now it is. It is being developed by Way Forward, which is the developer behind the Ducktales Remastered game that came out. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, that that game did very well. So, oh, it was um, pretty awesome. I, I, oh I yeah, played. IGN it gave amazing. it like a twelve out of ten. Um, <laughs> uh, um, I'll, I'll mention this. So, uh, the Shad Father eighty seven on Twitter, he said that the the uh, <laughs> this game uh, sounds like Sheltravania. So instead of uh, Castlevania, Sheltravania. So, wah wah wah. Yeah, wow, that's a, yeah. It it does kind of have that uh, three dimensional um, platformer aspect to it, but sure. I mean that that's the first thing I noticed when I was looking at the screenshots and all that. See, every time I hear Castlevania, I picture two D platforming and a whip. What? One of the turtles have a whip? Is is Raf getting back into his BDSM days with? Well, Mikey oh, might have one. A, a whip esque leather pants. That's true. Pants and everything. Well, we can expect to see Ass was Shredder. Chapped. Tiger Claw, um, mm -hmm. Dimension X, New York, uh, the Four Turtles, obviously, and yes, it is supposed to bridge the gap between season two and season three. So, oh, uh, so you have to play this game if you want to bridge the gap between season two and season three. And uh, I, I should mention too that uh, Tiger Claw three hundred five on Twitter did let us know that this isn't the first time that they've done a Ninja Turtles game, as they did the two thousand three. Uh, well. They did the game TMNT Battle for the City, which came out, uh, which is based on the, the 2K3 series. So this is actually their not not their first time in the Turtles universe. So. Uh, I don't think I ever played Battle for the City. Did any of you? Yeah, so, so TMNT Battle for the City was released in 2006, and it was a plug-and-play uh, game. So something that you, uh, I, I guess, is a... Um, you plug in, you stand play. alone. Yeah, that sounds like a pick up line at like a gaming convention. Like, hey, baby, want to do a little plug and play? Mm -hmm. awesome you guys are married. What do you know about pick up? You guys are married. What do you know about pickup lines? Actually, nothing at all. And I'm realizing that, that now. I, I've lost all my game, and yeah. what little I had is all gone. Wow, I'm watching this gameplay right now of uh, Battle for the City. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <sighs> Just I, well, yeah. <laughs> And there's there's only four stages, which is fantastic. And the bosses are as follows: stage one, two giant mousers; stage two, hun. Okay, that's legit. Stage three, two foot mystics, and then stage four, the shredder. Fantastic. Are you kidding me? So this guy that I'm watching the YouTube video of, he picks Donnie first, as everybody should when they're playing a Ninja Turtle video game. Literally falls down like a bottomless pit at, uh, a minute and a half into the game and dies and it's like wow and apparently when you're when your turtle dies you can't pick them anymore well essentially he sacrificed the the worst of the bunch so no no Raph you can't has not say that for a video game like, you can't, you say, can't that say that for a video game dude 
I don't care how much you want to try to crap all over all right, Donnie. All right. you got He's me. the most OP in a video game. Right. And you oh, know this it. Game looks so bad. You're 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 an aerospace engineer, Ryan. You know technology better than we do. Donnie's the most OP when it comes to video games. This Can't even true. crap all over it. This is true. This is so bad. Oh. Well, <laughs> that's two giant mousers. To, so. Now, granted, it was a plug and play, meaning the entire game was built into the controller, and the controller just went into the TV. Yeah, it's so. still that doesn't make it okay. Oh, apparently you can pick your turtle again after, like, after your second turtle dies. After your second turtle dies, you can pick the first turtle again. So when he died as Mikey, he just went right back to Donnie, like you should. <laughs> TMNT battle for the city. But, uh, this, I'm looking this it up right now. This does bring up a, a bigger point that th in 2014 we've had four video games released. Uh, do they, and they do, all suck. Do they count? Yeah, I was gonna say. Well, so so the first one was the one that came out just for 3DS. Darby, did you ever get a, a chance to play this one? one no, I did not. Magic I haven't found my dude. I have no idea where my 3DS is. I'm sure it's here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. And, and, Sorry. Uh, so then there's the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, game that's based on the film, and I do have that one. I've played it. It's all right. I haven't given it a full review or anything like that. But um, and then there's the uh, the Training Lair game for uh, Connect. Uh, that's also based on the film. I haven't seen that one at all. I haven't I haven't tried it out or anything. I don't have a Connect. And then uh, this one, the danger of bees. So, all right. So let's get out of video game news <laughs> and into collecting news. From Playmates. Collecting news. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Okay, we're doing that. We're doing that now. No, that's all right. Oh, Alex is like, I will comic news the hell out of this. <laughs> if we're doing that now, oh, you don't even know. I'm going to break windows. Here we go. So uh, this is a variety of topics that, um, again, just go to the show notes. Um, there's a, There's been a lot of stuff that's been coming out lately. Uh, we've got a, a link to uh, a series of uh, art that's done. Um, io9 put up a, a story here. Uh, it's by this this uh, this group called a shop called Quest. Okay, we get it. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's pretty solid uh, art though. Um, they've got both a, a web store and an Etsy store, and they actually have different things on them. So you check out both. Uh, I love know, Etsy. They got some really cool uh, turtles mm -hmm. out there. Um, uh, our, um, you guys remember Toka? Our boy Toka. No, <laughs> How can we all. forget Toka? <laughs> of course. Well, he put up a uh, a uh, article over there on uh, GoGreenMachine.org, and uh, he uh, is giving a review of the vinyl banks, the vinyl bust banks that um, Diamond Select uh, came out with, and uh, he's got a link in there in to the actual you know, to where you can actually uh, purchase them. But uh, um, they're pretty cool. They're pretty nice. Um, very detailed and uh this is these are the nick turtles i should mention and uh, uh you can actually remove the uh, the weapons and move the arms around and stuff like that so well we've got a uh, another story up here uh about this new set of uh, tmnt statues that are coming and this is a totally different style this is uh good smile company takes on tmnt statues based on james jeans artwork so um it, this is a very different style for the turtles. But it looks so giant. amazing, though. Which ones? The 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 uh, statue ones yep. from Good Smile Company. Like they have the, the the first on the on the first page. Well, I think there's actually only one page, but the the picture that they have posted is Leo, and it just looks so phenomenal. You like it? It's it's actually what Michael Bay's turtles should have looked like. Well, we'll get to that. We're, we got a story yeah. down in the movie yeah. section. We'll get to that. And uh, there's, there's. Uh... If we get to the giant Mikey action figure, that thing is we'll ridiculous. Get to that. Okay, all right. So uh, really quickly, <laughs> so again, check out the show notes for that. They they debuted these statues at uh, New York City Comic Con, which was just a few days ago. Nice. Uh, new thing coming out. You guys remember the the Neca turtles? The really cool, you know, Mirage Neca turtles. 
Yeah, well, NECA's not making those anymore. But uh, they are making scalers. Yeah. <clears throat> the creepiest looking turtle toys to date. Yeah, these are intended for like hanging on to your um, adults, ha- hanging on to like uh, headphone cords and stuff, and they're they're little mini. <laughs> Their faces are so creepy. Oh my god! <laughs> Especially Leo. Leo, please don't smile at me like that. <laughs> wow! They all have such bad intentions. It's <laughs> they did. Especially Leo. Leo's just like. Oh, legit. Leo, dude. Leo looks like he's pumped full of adrenaline from the Michael Bay movie, if you know what I'm talking about. Well, unfortunately, NECA is not making the, uh, uh, they're they're making these and not the Mirage uh, figures anymore, but it's okay because uh, Playmates is now making those Mirage, you know, base figures, and uh, they're starting to hit stores. Um, uh, We can give a shout out to our, uh, our listener, um, let's see. I, I'll, I'll use his screen name because I don't know if he wants me using his, his real name. So I will go ahead and, and, and give a shout out to Bert the Stormtrooper uh, for sharing. Bert. Yeah, so uh, he he does hey, Bert. Uh, he does a series mm. of uh, uh, action figure review videos over on YouTube, and he's uh, always uh, very good about letting <laughs> us know when he puts up new ones, and. Uh, so he's he's done a video review of these. Uh, I mean, we talked about them uh, coming out of San Diego Comic Con, and uh, um, so they're starting to hit hey, stores. Bert. I haven't seen them yet, but they're they're starting to hit stores apparently. And uh, so you can you can check out his uh, his videos over at youtubecom slash hippie trooper, H I P P I E T R O O P E R. All right. Oh yeah. You, uh, by the way, I'm getting those. I'm definitely getting the raft at least, because yeah. Uh, what uh, of the scalers? No, the oh, the Mirage, I was say, man, the that's... Mirage Playmates figures. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, speaking of vinyl, we were talking about the uh, the banks earlier. Uh, there is a lot of vinyl figures coming out, and I'm not even going to bother going through them all. But uh, there's a variety of companies: the Loyal Subjects, Yes Anime, Funko. Uh, they're all coming out with with turtles vinyl figures uh, like crazy so uh, to check out all the details go to the show notes and now what darby wants needs has to have coffee this came out of nowhere did you guys know this was coming i the, had no idea until adam the, whitlock shout out to adam whitlock uh yes. share this yes our listener good good thank you for doing that yeah adam he and read his book, us. by the way. Plug the Weller, amazing. <laughs> you're uh, welcome, Adam. You, <laughs> uh, this uh, is a three foot tall Michelangelo action figure, and I'm pretty sure it says four. Well, no, it says forty one inches. That is uh, forty one inches. So that's a three and a half feet. Okay, three and a half feet. So yeah, this I'm is this up. is actually made by Jack Pacific. Uh, they are the. Uh, the uh, the creators of this, I I just this came so out of nowhere. Like, I feel like yeah, I should giant have this. giant action figure. Yeah, apparently they're only planning on making Mikey. So what? Far. Yeah, really? Yeah, that's the only one. That's the only character anybody's seen so far. Okay, so do those weapons come out of his hands? Because I would, if I was a kid, I would beat somebody down with those nunchucks. Well, you can already get sorry. The, uh, you can already get, you know, the toy nunchucks. So. You can get the toy nunchucks, or you can buy the four-foot-tall action figure that also comes with nunchucks. Yeah. Totally. I mean, you tell me. <laughs> um, if they come out with a raft, yeah. It's going to happen. I know, um... Ryan's going to make passionate love to it if he buys it. <laughs> he's going to drill a hole in it. Jessica, yeah, Jessica's going to, like, start uh, putting up Facebook it about here? how lonely she is ever since her husband bought that Raphael really? figure. Really? really? Oh, yeah. Really? Dude, this is the Turtle Power Podcast. Nothing is sacred here. <laughs> <laughs> um, who did I... I saw somebody online, somebody else who had bought one. I can't remember who it was. Um, anyway. All if right. you buy it in Japan, it comes with tentacles. <laughs> it true. comes with free drill hold for you already. That's, that, that is there true. You go. That is absolutely true. <laughs> uh, remember, the, you guys have seen like the high-tech toilets and stuff in Japan, right? Yeah. Are 
Are they as awesome as I expect them to be? Yep. Sweet. They are. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's like, I'm getting one of these in my house. I wish I wish I could. Aren't they on the floor? That's got to be tough for a behemoth such as yourself. Say that again? Aren't the toilets, like, on the floor? Uh, n no. That that's good to say. That's got to be totally tough for a behemoth. Anyway. All right, uh, Alex. Mm. So you are, uh, you're still catching up at the end of season two, right? Uh, yeah, and apparently season three at the same time. Yes. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and same for Darby. So I will present this in a spoiler-free fashion. Gilbert but, Godfrey. Uh, let's go into TV news. I'm still like, creeped out by these NECA figures, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> I keep accidentally going back to that page, and it's like, Raph, please stop looking at me like that, man. Well, Leo's the worst, though. I'm sorry. <laughs> Alright, so into TV news. Um, season 2 ended. Season 3 began. Uh, we Remember, if you, we had this long break, like, with only, like, three episodes left of season 2. And then... Uh, then all of a sudden, season two picked back up. It finished off, and then season three immediately started the next week. I don't think yeah. that's how it normally works. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Did, didn't they wait like six months between one and two last time? Yes. I mean, which is normal. Normally, when a TV show goes through its season, it stops, and then there's a break, and then this next season starts. But I'm pretty sure this had to do – I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure this had to do with redubbing – lines from um from early Jason out Biggs. yeah yeah so yeah. season two finished off with um gosh i can't remember his name the uh the guy that they had come in to uh to finish to kind of redub uh all of we'll call uh, we'll call him not jason Biggs. yes yes who actually is. isn't a bad leo no he did a good job he he was a very good uh voice replacement uh oh, yeah, yeah. jason Biggs. So Damn, that's a tell thing. us how you that really happened. feel. Um, but, uh, and I won't spoil it for you guys since you haven't seen it yet, but uh, uh, season three is where Seth Green officially comes in and uh, and picks up the role for, for Leo's voice. And, and how's uh, he doing so far? Well, I'm, I want to leave that up to, to Alex. Uh, now, I, I can tell you, Jessica doesn't, my wife Jessica, she's, she's not a big fan of it so far. But... Uh, um, I, I want to get I want to get uh, I want to get Alex's point of view, seeing as though he is the Leo guy. So, um, but the cool thing is they explain it. They explain the voice change, which is brilliant. So, and I'm I'm not gonna say anything else, but you'll see. Um, we do have a couple of <laughs> interviews in the uh, show notes for uh, some interviews with Seth Green and. Uh, um, one of them is with directly with Seth Green talks all about, uh, you know, his, how this being like a, uh, you know, a dream come true, getting to work with the turtles, um, how he's been a turtles fan for his whole life. So, uh, yeah. that's really cool to see. I mean, I, of course, you know, he's a turtles fan. All you got to do is watch robot chicken to, to realize that, but uh, they should have gotten Seth Myers. That's what they should have done. <laughs> Not really. No, no. They, uh, um, the guy interviewing him was like, "So, did you have to research the role?" And he's like, "Really? Are you are you serious? <laughs> An idiot. <laughs> Clearly, you didn't research your interview with me. If you really just asked me that question, <laughs> stupid yeah, ass pretty Canadians. Much. Pretty much. Um, what does WFT mean? I'm just wondering. WFT. Um, that is a oh, brilliant that is question. A WTF? That was sorry. That was a that was a misprint on my. Oh, oh, I'm, oh, Ryan typo. Hashtag Ryan typo. There you Apparently, go. Hashtag you don't Ryan need to typo. know that can how to read or to write if you're an engineer. Yeah. Well, duh. You just need to know math. <laughs> All right. So uh, you know what's gonna be funny too when when a pilot has to eject out of some plane that Ryan is building and he can't find the eject button because it's spelled E T J C T E. I know he's gonna go all Floyd May Mayweather on it. Escape! I don't know. I don't know. Here's money. 
Here's Stick money. F He's gonna be like, escape. Where's the escape button? <laughs> it it kind of sounds. It delights like me to no doubt that you guys think that that's what I do for a living. So is 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 make planes. So. I'm pretty sure it's pretty accurate. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well. uh... Speaking of, can you make a turtle blimp for us? Yeah. Why haven't you why done haven't that yet? Thought of, yeah, why has this not even come up yet? This feels like something you should have already done. Technically, yes, I can. I have a couple of fans. Yep. Uh, at the very least, we can make some... Uh, we can hook them up to a hang glider. We can do the turtle gliders. And, uh, <laughs> we can some, do the turtle gliders, gliders yeah. because all you need is uh, some desk fans, and you're good. Well, yeah, duh. That's how great Donnie is. He can make flying machines out of desk fans and garbage bags. <laughs> <laughs> that's a... A real you, you you can't Ryan come on step physics up your engineering defined. game <laughs> physics is fine they're up making up their own physics game. why haven't you done that exactly I failed you obviously yeah you have you failed America is what you failed <laughs> America no pressure <laughs> uh, yeah. that's well, on Netflix though, by the way now but I know I will watch it. it well uh, uh um uh, so I'll just say that there's uh, some really interesting voice uh talent uh coming in at the end of season two and the beginning of season three is what? it is it kevin eastman as ice cream kitty yeah, well because that was oscar worthy right there uh ice cream kitty does return a couple times uh more than a couple times actually so ice cream kitty is definitely getting some screen time oh, of course <sighs> and, uh, just because of his voicing it that that's that's really the only reason why they would make it well, for ice cream no, kitty. they explain it too they explain it sure they do um We've got a uh, 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 Gilbert Gottfried. I'm not going to spoil it by saying if you haven't seen him yet who they play, but Gilbert Gottfried uh, well, plays. I, clearly, a, it's going to be obvious. It's Gilbert Gottfried. A Godfrey. parrot of some kind. Yes. Yeah. No, it's not a parrot. He doesn't play a Really? <laughs> not a parrot? He definitely doesn't play Well, then what good? A uh, horse? No, I'm not. No, I'm, no, no. It's no. a very specific character. And I'm not um, wait, wait. And very if you've specific. seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Metalhead? Uh, nope. Oh, God, no. <laughs> no. All right, and uh, also in the most recent episode, the most recent episode was great because I'm watching it and I'm like, is that who I think it is? And then, Who else does Gilbert Gottfried sound like? Who else sounds like Gilbert Gottfried? Nobody is that Gilbert Gottfried? Like, I feel like that's Gilbert Gottfried. That's not what I'm talking about. Is he okay? Another new episode. The most recent episode. Man. The uh, Bigfoot episode. Uh, oh, my God, he's Bigfoot. The, the finger. The, the character <laughs> of the finger in there. And I'm like, is that who I think it is? The finger and, and dude. And then he started to, you know, if you've seen the episode, you know what I'm talking about. He starts to do certain things in the episode, and I'm like, oh my god, I think that is who I think it is. And sure enough, I, you know, watched the the credits. You know, I had to slow them down because they're flying through all the names. But uh, it was uh, Jesse the Body Ventura, actually. So uh, come the, on, man, seriously? Yeah. Yeah. Where oh my god, are they going to the Battle Nexus? <laughs> you are so way off. <laughs> That's fine though. <laughs> Alright. Well let's hey, let's let's get to the uh the, the New York City Comic Con panel because this was uh or I guess New York Comic Con panel. Hey Alex, did you like that tweet I just sent out? Um uh, uh hold on. Maybe. <laughs> oh, you oh yeah, Kasha <laughs> <laughs> You son of a Oh yeah, Kasha <laughs> All right. Uh, um, New York Comic Con panel. Uh, check the show notes for the for the uh, link. You can watch the edited version because uh, they only had a uh, an edited version that they allowed out because there were some videos that they didn't want people seeing out on the web. But of course, being your source for all the news, reviews, and insight into the world of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, we got you covered. So. In the video, you can see new weapons for the turtles. That's all based on this series, this this season. You know, again, I'm not going to spoil anything, but they're in a place, which, by the way, where they go to is great. I'm so glad that they went there. I'm interested to see how long they stay there. Um, I, I'm trying to be vague, but for those who are watching, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but uh, this, this, so they're, they're, they're going to have to reinvent themselves out here. Uh, so new weapons. We're gonna see Renette. She's coming back, um, making an impact in IDW comics. Now coming to the Nick Turtle series. Uh, apparently, oh by the way, this is a thing now. 
Hashtag Leo look, a yeah. character, one of the turtles, at least one of the turtles, is getting mutated every episode. <laughs> and there's always something, it's either one of them or three of them, and, it's, and then it's up to the uh, one other one to, like, bring them back. So that's a reoccurring theme in this uh, series, apparently, so. And what's in the new season? Just in the end of season two, beginning of season three, I mean, the, the, yeah. all of season two, I mean, how many times have we seen where... Uh, you know, a turtle gets mutated or, or gets brainwashed or, you know, something right. happens and then it's down. The oh, my God, I figured it out. Leo's voice changes because he's going through puberty. No. So uh, uh, we're going to uh, get a speed demon Donnie where he gets mutated and uh, he they're going to do some sort of like 70s uh, muscle car inspired episode something you know what this is you know what this straight up is this is them wanting to make more toys transformers and yet we can't get a karai toy no he doesn't turn into a car he turns into like a crazed mutant version of himself that wants to drive a really fast car yeah Yeah. you know what i'm saying so uh and then april's gonna fall for him because he's gonna become a bad boy there you go yep well uh, i believe renette is going to be the infatuation of mikey so uh, but we finally, I mean, we broke the story months and months ago, but uh, it was officially announced that Bebop and Rocksteady were coming in to the, into the series, and they actually showed an animatic version of the mutation of Bebop and Rocksteady. So, That's a big word, right? Now, one thing that they did clip out... It's an engineering word. ...is <laughs> the addition of another new character, a totally new version of this character, by the way. We're getting Hun into the oh. turtles. Yes. Nice. Now, Great. this version of Hun is completely different than what we've seen. He's really scrawny and weak. and He, he is. He's scrawny, oh. but not weak. He's scrawny, but he's th- he like think like Bruce Lee. Scrawny. But no, that's not okay. I'm sorry, that's not okay. This... Okay, watch the video. Again... Check to the show notes. We've got links to uh, the video so you can see the animatic version of Hun. It is very Bruce Lee-esque. And uh, he freaking takes out Casey Jones in this animatic. So. Do we know his history with Casey Jones yet? If, they, if there is any? We don't. Or... I don't think there is any. Do we also know if he can lift up like 5,000 pounds like the old Hun could? He, I believe he cannot. Hmm. Bruce Lee could. There you go. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's going to conclude our TV news, and now we're. Whoa, man! Go Why'd in... you breeze right through that? We should have taken our time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Alex! Jerk. We're going to leave uh, this section. I'm not in a hurry. I'm just wondering. <laughs> Hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go into... I ask where we're going to end it, and you guys automatically assume that I'm trying to rush through it. I'm just wanting to know. I was asking a question, and now everybody's rushing through everything, and now the fans are suffering for it. This is not... This is not okay. That's okay. We're, we're not going to... We're going we're gonna to leave TV news and go into comics news. I strike two on my way down. Donatello takes out a third with his staff. <laughs> Already, the pudgy ones are starting to panic. Raph loves this stuff. He's not alone. Why is he narrating? Is he crazy? Hardcore crazy. I love these guys! We left TV news a long time ago. <laughs> I thought. No, oh, that wait. For the, that was all for the Nick Turtles. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> this thing paying attention. <laughs> All right, comics news. Uh, we've got uh, this isn't really a comic, but uh, I do I did want to uh, bring fans' attention to this. So uh, Peter Laird um, did a a, uh, a blog post over at his blog, Peter Laird's TMNT blog dot com, where he gives his review. How many blogs is that? <laughs> he gives his review of the. Um, the Ultimate Visual History, you know, uh, the book we had uh, Andrew Farrago on the show. Nice. And, and uh, he gives a, a full review and uh, uh, a lot of his inner um, 
some additional detail to a lot of the pages, a lot of the info. So, um, you know, it does it does have some some flaws in it, which you know uh, any book's going to have. Um, it's got some um, some some misprints and some some stuff. But he likes he's in this blog post. He essentially tries to um, uh, clear up some of these uh, some of these uh, um, inconsistencies. So. Uh, he says, uh, even with the flaws above, uh, this book is well worth the cover price and will definitely have a place in my bookshelf. So, uh, and I agree, it is it is fantastic. It is a uh, a must have for any turtles fan. Um, let's see. So, comics news proper. Uh, definitely go and check out Rich's site tmnt ninjaturtlescom uh, he's got the best site on the on the net for uh, for Turtle Comic News. Um, if you want to see what's coming up, um, what's out right now, uh, definitely go to his site to check that out. Uh, this was pretty cool. We got a question from uh, our listener Tiger Claw three hundred five, and uh, he had a he had a question about issue thirty seven. His question was interesting. So the comic has a mutant named Bludgeon. What happened to Armagon couldn't use him, so I forwarded that over to IDW uh, TMNT editor Bobby Kernow. Of course, we had him on episode twenty-five of our uh, of our illustrious show here. Yep. Mm. <laughs> so uh, and he was great. He he actually responded back. So uh, he said uh, they were originally going to use um, Armagon, but uh, the, that character has a unique personality and setting that they wouldn't end up using. So in this case, it actually made more sense to use a new character, uh, much the same way as the, the difference between Alapex and Ninjara. Because you, you look at them, and they're very... Similar. Similar, right, yeah. Uh, but this is... And I, I actually appreciate this a lot, because too many times we've seen where... Uh, different incarnations of the turtles will take a character and change it so much to a degree that you're like, okay, if you're going to change it that much, just make it a different character, you know? Mm -hmm. Don't call it the mm -hmm. same character just because, you know... So I, I actually appreciate that a lot. You're not deleting the other character. You're not... Um, you're not resetting, redoing that character. Instead, you just make a new one. There ain't nothing wrong with that, right? So let's uh, so let's talk about what's out right now. We've got uh, in the IDW series one through thirty nine issues one through thirty nine are out, and forty issue forty is coming out November twenty sixth. Now currently, there's only fifty issues planned for the IDW series. Uh, that's as far as they've gone out so far, uh, okay. planning wise. So make sure all of our listeners make sure you're out there buying the issues. Um, you got to keep this uh, series going because it is fantastic. As far as micro series go, uh, we've got uh, Turtles in Time one through four are all out, and they've actually got a, a trade paperback uh, collecting them all. That's in the works. Uh, the annual finally made its way out. <laughs> the annual that was supposed to be before Turtles in Time <laughs> it finally came out. I think it was like around like issue three. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> But that was because I was Kevin's, and we, we all know how busy Kevin is. Oh, yeah. And then uh, the new miniseries is starting up uh, very soon. Actually, as we're recording, it's coming out next week, and that's the TMNT Ghostbusters crossover miniseries. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's all set to start uh, next. Uh, those are the um, – oh, and then uh, for the Nick Turtles Adventures, uh, that's uh, they've got issue 16. 1 through 16 out, and uh, they have plans for 17 and 18 already as, as well. Uh, as far as reprints go, uh, we've got some, some new additions, which is great. Uh, we've got uh, Soul's Winter, uh, which, of course, was... Uh, we, I think we actually talked to Bobby about this. Um, this was uh, Mirage Volume 1, issues 31, 35, 36. They weren't originally able to uh, reproduce those when they were making... Or I should say, when they were reprinting the uh, volume one, and uh, but they apparently have uh, figured out uh, the rights and everything to that uh, mini series, and so it's all set to come out November fifth. And uh, Mirage Classics, 
this is the uh, the series that is uh, continuing, you know, reprinting all the uh, original Mirage, you know, volume one, uh, you know, besides these couple of leftover issues uh, has been done for a while. They're now moved on to volume two. So Mirage Classics Trade Paperback issue nine, which collects <coughs> MNT volume two issues six through nine is all set for coming out on December 3rd. Mirage Tales of the TMNT trade paperback, uh, one through five is out. Uh, I think it was one through four. Um, maybe it was only one through two. I can't remember. Um, I think it was just one through two. Covered Tales of the TMNT volume one, and uh, Tales of the TMNT volume two, which was much larger than the first one, uh, is uh, being handled now. And uh, they've um, announced issue six. For November 12th, and that's going to cover issues Mirage, Tales of the TMNT, Volume 2, issues 13 through 16. And those are the ones that you've got a bunch of, Alex, right? You've got that, that Tales of the TMNT, Volume 2. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. So if there's uh, any that you weren't able to get your hands on, uh, you might be able to find them in these uh, trade paperbacks. So, great. Sweet. And uh, that's it for comic book news. Look at that. That's quick. Oh. And oh. Uh, so let's oh gosh. Let's like, we gotta get we gotta get through it. Alright, let's go on to movie news. <laughs> So uh, we're still dealing with the the fallout of uh, of the movie. So um, I will say this is pretty cool. A, uh, a video that we posted. This was a um, the Nickelodeon um, special that uh, that they released called Inside the Action, and uh, it was on Nickelodeon, and they never put it online, and I got my hands on it. Um, I don't even remember how. I think they sent it to me. But, uh, so, we uploaded it for them. And uh, it's got 63,000 views. <laughs> so, uh, wait, what? Six, six, we, yeah, we have 64,274 views as of right now. And 140 thumbs up and only seven down. So, thank you who said thumbs down. And thank you for the thumbs up. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. So they've, I, we've I gotten a thousand extra views in the last half a day, 12 hours. Yeah, we're YouTube legends already. So, wait. No, no, no. Wait, what video has 64,000 views? Click the link in the show notes. You, I, I'm just on our page. You tell me yeah. which one it you is. Remember, you remember the, 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 the Megan Fox, Will Arnett, little uh, Inside the yeah, Action? Inside the action. Yeah, Inside the Action, yeah. Yeah, that's what has that's the that's the video. So wait, we were the ones that up. We were the only ones who uploaded that. We were the first. Maybe one. one of the first. Yeah. Wow! Look at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's a thing. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm are we finally you. legit now? Does that mean after like over two years, we can consider ourselves legit? Well, y you hope at least half of those people saw who uploaded it. And then they, you know, they might get uh, some some eyes over to uh, to the show. Do we? Maybe we should. Hang on. Did we? Maybe we should add in like the uh, like the the description or like the link to our podcast from now on. Well, you know what? I'm looking at this stuff now, and you know, Ryan's. Uh, well, I mean, the episode 33, the Guinness World Record one, over a mm -hmm. thousand. Uh, our spoiler cast over 1,500. Like. YouTube okay. is where it's at. Okay. Man. YouTube is where it's at. Yeah. Yep. YouTube. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Nope. Okay. I, I'm back to reality. I'm seeing the other episodes where it says like 20. Yeah. Well, <laughs> people don't want to go back. That's the thing. I mean, we keep them up for uh, for uh, for anybody who is interested, but the majority of people aren't going to go back and listen to what was happening in the Turtles universe in 2012. Well, we, right. we, we expected we expected the movie ones to be a little higher anyway. Definitely. Right. Not sixty four thousand high. Not sixty four thousand high. high, but yeah. Yep. Wow. 
So you're welcome, Nickelodeon. You're welcome, Viacom. That's like the entire population of China. You pay us already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright. Well, uh, speaking of uh, um, video content for the movie... Uh, we got a link in the show notes over to traileraddict.com, and uh, this is a pretty cool site. They've got a collection of every single trailer and video, you know, promotional video that ever came out for this movie. So um, a lot of behind-the-scenes videos and stuff like that, too, so uh, check that out in the show notes. And uh, have you guys seen Legend of the Yokai? You guys I haven't watched Legend it yet, no. Oh. All right, so if you haven't either... Uh, again, check the show notes or just go to legendoftheyokai.com. More Fallout. Uh, we do have a DVD Blu-ray <laughs> release. And Darby, you were, uh, you were just looking at uh, some of the details there. Uh, yeah, an hour and a half ago. Yep. So we're going to have <laughs> a one-disc DVD release. We're going to have a two-disc Blu-ray release. And then we're going to have a... Digital, actually, the first one is the digital HD release, which is coming out November 25th. But then the big dog is the two-disc Blu-ray gift set with Raphael statue. Now, why Raphael statue, you might ask? Well, because this is an Amazon-specific uh, um, gift set. You can only get it from Amazon. And they were the ones who put out a, um, a, a poll to fans and said which one do you want do, which if we were going to do this which character would you want and guess who won yep so I'm sorry guys I'm sorry there's no uh, Leo I'm sorry there's no Donnie but yes Raphael did I mean considering it's the Michael Bay Turtles you could have it <laughs> good point good point well considering considering April stole that shredder kill from Raph. I mean, they just felt bad for him, so they decided to vote for him. There you go. Well, it's a uh, it's currently $80 um, uh, on Amazon if you pre-order. seventy nine ninety nine, and that's, that's too much for money. the gift set. Too much, too much money. I don't know. It, I don't know. I really that's don't too know. Much. That's too much fucking money. It, I'm it's sorry. It's a lot of money. That's, mm-hmm. that's a lot of money. Um, the, the basic I'll give you $5. Version, the basic version, the Blu-ray 3D uh, the Blu-ray, the DVD, and the digital HD, all that comes together in one package for currently up for uh, pre-order at twenty-five dollars, twenty-nine, twenty-four ninety-nine. So let us know which let us know which uh, which version of the movie you're gonna get, if or if you're gonna get it at all. I mean that that's a totally legit <laughs> answer as well. I'm gonna get it, but I'm not gonna be happy about it. I'm gonna be like angry face while I'm buying it, just like <laughs> you're gonna buy. So you're gonna buy the special edition. Oh God! No! 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 no. So it's essentially so here. If you want to look at it like that, right now, if you get the 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 just the the Blu-ray version, you know that's twenty five dollars, right? If you get the statue, that's eighty dollars. So you're looking at a you're gonna get the the movie and then a statue that costs fifty five dollars. Is that statue worth fifty five dollars? Oh God, no, 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 yeah. no, no. Yeah, I didn't think so. Yeah, I'm just gonna wait for uh, for it to go on sale. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a... I'm gonna wait till I, I find I... in the in the five dollar bin at Walmart. I've already seen the movie. I have no interest in seeing it again. Um, just because really Johnny Knoxville gonna... voices your your boy. Uh, you know, he didn't do an awful job though. No, he didn't. I didn't he, think he, he did really... an awful job. Yeah, no, he didn't. It, it just uh, the, it, Michael Bay and just the entire production team did a pretty bad job. But... That Leo face, though, that that O face, he does. Oh god! <laughs> all right, all right. Enough. I, I've covered this movie enough. I don't want to talk about it anymore. All right. Well, we'll 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 go through this stuff pretty quick here. So, um, over on IGN, they uh, they posted a uh, an article and a video that describes ten Easter eggs from the Ninja Turtles movie. So. That uh, most of the stuff, uh, I mean, I knew already. There was a couple things I didn't catch, but uh, um, so check that out. Uh, there's some stuff about Arrested Development and uh, you know, the, the. Oh, Usagi you know, I didn't even, I didn't stuff. notice the Usagi Yojimbo toy. Because the the whole like or... uh, mutant rabbits, yeah, we were gonna do rabbits, but uh, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I missed that. Yeah, I missed that completely. All That's right. nice. Uh, this was this was interesting. So, um, Jonathan Liebsman, our, uh, our our director, uh, he did a interview over on Collider. dot com, which you know it's a legit website, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, you can go in the uh, you can follow the link to uh, watch the video yourself. Um, some of the things that uh, I thought were pretty interesting. Uh, he he said that there's a lot of deleted scenes. Uh, featuring the human characters, which uh, it, from listening to interviews with different people, that's pretty much what they said as well, is that there was a lot of things that they filmed that didn't make it into the movie, uh, including stuff we do know about, like uh, trench coat Raph. You know, where'd that go? Right. Um, there's another scene apparently with um, Vern and April taking on some foot soldiers and... Uh, they took it out because they said, you know, after they thought about it, they didn't think it made sense for a um, for two civilians to be able to fight, you know, trained military, you know, paramilitary. People. But it does but, make yeah. sense for one of those civilians to kill the shredder. Mm. Technically, he didn't die though. He did not. He die. I'm not. I'm not giving April a shredder kill because he didn't die. He didn't. He didn't. But still, I mean, he also did she say got that the he, he thinks that they'll probably get released at some point. He's not a fan of releasing deleted scenes, but he thinks they will be in the. Yes, uh, they probably suck just as bad as the movie did, or worse. <laughs> so I wouldn't either. Uh, Playmates, uh, he he said that Playmates did not have much input in the making uh, of the film. Otherwise, there would have been a lot more vehicles. <laughs> or or the turtles would have looked better. Yep. Well, or both. we know that they were heavily involved in the decision about. Uh, well, actually, they weren't heavily involved in the decision with the name of the movie because they said from the very beginning, "Are you sure you want to call it Ninja Turtles?" Because there's probably going to be some backlash. And Paramount said, "Yeah, yeah, definitely, we're calling it Ninja Turtles." And then they didn't. And then they changed it. And <laughs> Playmate said, "Well." On our packaging, it says Ninja Turtles, so you're going to have to deal with it. Right. Um, the idea of the distinct-looking turtles, you know how every turtle looks so much different than the other, from all the others? That and the turtles being gigantic, both of those came from directly from Michael Bay. No surprise on the being giant. Uh, I mean, you know, Transformers. Uh, distinct-looking, um, I mean, it is what it is. I don't mind if they're distinct looking. Yeah. I mean, I you know because it's like you, you watch the '87 series now, and as much as we loved it growing up, eh, you could pretty much just throw a bandana on any of those turtles, and their personalities are pretty similar too. So it's like that's why nobody cared if the colors were wrong on the, you know, during the animation. It was just like, well, they're all kind of the same turtle anyway. Right. I just like that Leo got Russell Crowe's eyes and Nelson Mandela's mouth. Yes. So uh, that was the other seriously. Thing that he said. How, how do you how do you go like you're you know you're you're doing your character sketches and you're trying to figure. You know what? You know what would look good on Leo. Let's put Nelson Mandela's mouth. <laughs> Let's see if that works. Oh, isn't yeah. he supposed to be like the wise one that doesn't that wants to avoid conflict? So I, I mean, I mean, did they pick Mandela because Mandela was so hot at the time? And well, Russell Crowe's like, known God. for being a really calm, level-headed guy. You know. I mean, Russell Crowe's known for that. Of course, well, no, they, you're absolutely right. So he said they, they used Clint Eastwood as the model for Raph, uh, Russell Crowe's eyes and Nelson Mandela's mouth for Leo, Bill Murray for Michelangelo, and Le- uh, Leonard Nimoy for uh, Donatello. So. I could totally buy every single one of those. Mm-hmm. Now that you mentioned Bill Murray, because I'm watching a promo <laughs> clip right now, I could totally see Bill Murray and Michelangelo. Really? I can see it a little bit. Here's here's a, here's what I'm noticing from those character descriptions, though. Each character, Rath, uh, Donnie, Michelangelo, they used a specific person to model their personality. Not for Leo. They just took someone's eyes and someone's mouth and then let the rest kind of work itself out. Mm, yeah. I'm actually watching this thing right now, this uh, official motion capture promo clip number three that came out in August. It's actually a pretty cool... It shows, like, a scene, and then it shows them, like, doing the actual scene on set with the motion capture and everything. It's actually pretty cool to watch. Is that over on Trailer Addict? 
Uh, no, it's on YouTube. I just I, I typed in Ninja Turtles Adrenaline Scene, and this popped up because I wanted to pull up Leo's O face <laughs> and send it to Alex. <laughs> Right, it so, also shows uh, them doing the elevator scene, which is cool. I mean, I don't know. It's a pretty interesting video. Oh yes, the it shows them in the uh, in the motion capture in the elevator. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Well, they're actually not in an elevator. They're all just standing yeah, next to each right. other on a on a right. stage. Right. Yeah. Um. So this was interesting. So, um, I don't know. There must have been some sort of NDA that expired because all of a sudden a variety of um, concept art started flooding the net um, from from various um, sources. Uh, we'll go through these uh, one by one. So this is this one is from uh, conceptual artist uh, Setmir Gorgiev. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> wow. Who, uh, who that sounds right. The Green wow. Lantern. Yeah. That is man. Why did you even try? Yeah. Apparently worked on the Green Lantern, so. Um, so this. So is that's Lantern, something so. you want to put on your resume. Yeah. He, uh, Ryan. He, he did make a crane figure, which is pretty awesome. Um, he did have a Bebop and Rocksteady, which also looked pretty solid. They looked very much like what I would expect CG versions of Bebop and Rocksteady from the '87 animated series. That's essentially right. what they look like. Um, the turtles themselves, um, I think they look pretty good. Um, they're, they're not as, um, then the interesting thing with all of these different versions is that they don't look as, um, strikingly different, <laughs> um, that the, uh, the ones that we do have in the movie do. So, uh, so that's that one. Let's look at this other one from the Aaron Sims company. And this one that's interesting is that Donnie does have the uh, the goggles uh, on his head. And then there's one more that is put together by Josh Nitz. Nizzy? No, Josh Nizzy. Oh, okay. just, just stop with the names. And uh, <laughs> yeah, just, just, you know this yeah. one's legit because it's got, uh, it's got the actual Ninja Turtles logo. Now, um, again, like... It's, they're just, the way they say this is, uh, okay, so Bay didn't turn the turtles into aliens, but the concept art looks so much more impressive in my mind. That's, that's the writer here of this, uh, which is, uh, Sarah Gibson. And I, right. I have to agree with her. Um, the versions, they're, they're more animated looking and, uh, and actually the splinter looks very similar to, um, mm -hmm. To probably, I'd say the uh, the TMNT uh, version. Yeah, the uh, shredder is still like beefed up. Definitely beefed up. Yeah, but he looks more. I'm gonna say human. BA. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's. Uh, I guess. I guess you could say that. Um, I do like the turtles though. Yeah. Yep. No, no goggles. No, Don no Donny goggles. Yeah, um, I actually I like the uh, the 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 purple bandana on the end of the bow staff. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so again, and I like out... his uh, his uh, his Apple uh, his Apple iWatch as well. <laughs> he, he does more more product yeah. placement, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. This was a good spot by uh, by our uh, our uh, listener uh, Adam. Adam. You know what Adam. Leo's got? You know what Leo's got more than the other turtles though. I'm just gonna say it right now, he's got the uh, the phallic belt if you will yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's true uh this was this was interesting though is that uh, adam Mutlach uh, did point out is uh he, he says does raf have a nose ring he sure does he sure does <laughs> yeah he does. He's, got, he's got a nice little septum piercing there you go and a, and a yankees tat and uh he does have a yankees tat oh my god that is that he is has cool. the I Heart New York button. He does. I was about to say that. He's got the I Heart New York button yeah. instead of Leo. Yeah. So this is very interesting. This is some. You know what he looks like? You know what he straight up looks like with the pads and the way that his like front shell is formed. He looks like a catcher, which makes sense. He would totally be a catcher in the pitcher catcher relationship. He absolutely would. Oh yeah. He looks like a catcher, Ryan. You can't. You can't deny it. Yeah. 
<laughs> his, even his shell, look at the top of his shell. His shell That's what I was saying. Those... The top of his shell looks like catcher's gear. Yeah, which doesn't make sense. Weird. Yeah. But anyway, so uh, yeah, check out the show notes uh, so you can see these photos as well. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting, um, especially that last one. I think that one has probably the most influence on the... Uh, on what, the Shredder? Itself. Just the whole... the. Um, this last set of uh, of concept art by uh, Josh and Izzy. So, got yeah, it. Apparently, this was used back uh, when they pitched the movie in 2011. So, all right. Uh, next thing, uh, we've got a, a series of interviews. Um, we've got an interview with uh, Tohuru Masamune. Uh, that's the actor that uh, portrays. Uh, uh. Uh, we've got a uh, an interview with uh, the, team, Masumi. the team that did the uh, uh, all of the uh, stunt work in the movie. Uh, we've got a, three different interviews with uh, all the visual effects people that worked, um, you know, ILM and, and, and everybody. So we're, we won't go through those. Just check the show notes uh, to, to uh, if you'd like to read those interviews. And MC then, Mikey. And then we've got news for a TMNT movie too. All right, so it was announced uh, after I think after week two that uh, due to the success of the uh, first film that uh, they would. You, you say that like it's a bad thing. You're like due to the success of the movie. Yeah, because okay. look, I don't want the same thing, and I and I really get the feeling like they're gonna do the same thing. You think it's gonna be like TM? Uh, I like Transformers for the second movie, it's just utter garbage. Just utter, utter because, garbage. Because the way that Hollywood works is, which normally I agree with, but if it ain't fixed, then don't, you know, then if it ain't broken, then don't fix it. And this was a financial success for them, so they're not going to fix it. Even though it was broken. Yes. Well, it was broken from a, a critical analysis of the story, and I got, I got something to say about that in a minute. But financially, it made money. Sure. Made a lot of money. That's all that matters. That's that all they is, care about. You think they care about Oscars and crap? No, they want money. Yep. Michael Bay definitely doesn't care about Oscars. I can tell you. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Didn't give but, a shit about uh, that. So, uh, Jonathan Liebsman, uh, Andrew Form, uh, they did say, uh, uh, and Brad Fuller. Um, Andrew Form and, and Brad Fuller are the producers. Of course, Jonathan Liebsman's the director. Uh, they did an interview with Comic Book Movie and. Uh, they talk about you know some plans going forward uh, for the next movie. Um, it's funny because Jonathan Liebsman even says, "I read a J.C. Jo- a Casey Jones script <laughs> while making this one." So, uh, wow, yeah, we, we know about that one. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so looking forward, what they would want to do, and there's definitely talk about Casey Jones. There's talk about Bebop and Rocksteady. There's talk about the Krang. There's talk about. Um, uh, Baxter Stockman, so uh, I mean that's good. They they they're gonna be um, you know including other characters that we know about, um, uh, you know. But as far as what the storyline is gonna be, you know, we'll see. Uh, we've got uh, some other, we've got some other other. Uh, Phil, hey, hey, Phil Lamar is Baxter Stockman. Anybody? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Phil Lamar, Baxter Stockman. I mean, you can you can request whatever you want, but who knows what they would actually end up doing? Hey, I'm just saying the dude's a legit actor who's been around forever, dude, and he's a good voice actor too. So I mean, I could totally see Phil Lamar as Baxter Stockman. Yeah, sure. it's gonna be Morgan Freeman. <laughs> no, 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 when I first made these mouses, I was just trying to rid New York City of rats. Then I realized they can break into bank vaults and make me a lot of money. <laughs> That's pretty good, bro. Notice how, pretty, they, pretty good. notice how they march side by side, single file, into the bank vaults and take the money for me. Morgan, I mean Baxter Stockman. <laughs> <laughs> Very well done. Very well done. <laughs> Uh, um, thank so, you. So to to finish off movie news, you know we we've we had our our big movie 
review slash spoiler cast. Which had over 1,500 views. On YouTube, yes. And, you know, I think we got some backlash on it. We, we, we've got a little bit, but I just want to say we're, we as the Turtle Power podcast are not alone with our assessment of this movie. Okay. And I just want to um, say, if you don't like it, I don't give a Boyakasha! Hey, six likes, no dislikes. If you like it, then that's fine. If you didn't like it, that's fine too. We are just providing our analysis of the movie. Oh, and, and my apologies to Boom78 that we were wrong, that it was 19 different cheeses and not 99 on the pizza. Yes, Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Um, so I, I will reference you to Rotten Tomatoes. Go ahead and, and check out the the uh, rating over there. Actually, you know what? I'll just tell you. It's a 22%. Okay. That's much higher than I thought it Which was. Which is almost how many cheeses that pizza has. The, the <laughs> tomato meter is a 22%. And over at Metacritic, it's got a score of 31. Out of? Out of, out of what? 31 out of 100. Ooh, dang, I was hoping for 30. Yep. So, just to give you an idea um, of what other people are scoring it, I mean, this is not just us that, that felt that way. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, user scores are around in the 50s on both sides. So. Look, the movie sucks unless you're a simple-minded... Boyakasha! which apparently is a good part of the nation. And there's uh, Michael Bay going box office, 188.9 million. What? Yep. Exactly. They ain't going to fix it. They ain't going to change it. They ain't going to nope. change it. And that's not, I mean, and then they're going to make money off of the figures. They're going to be making money off of all the stupid merchandise. Be making money off of the sequels, because that's going to happen. Yep. Be making money with the, with the freaking Blu-ray release and the special editions. Man, you know what? Right, right. You know what? Gone Girl may be an Oscar winner at 88%, but it's only got 26.4 mil. What? Uh, mm, scoreboard. Yep. Scoreboard. <laughs> oh, that's <funny>. <laughs> <laughs> That's all Michael Bay has to say. Ah, uh, scoreboard. Oh, yes, you are a brilliant directed, great movie, very well acted, Oscar worthy caliber. But my movie made a hundred and sixty million dollars more than yours did. Mm. Yeah. Yep. So we'll see. When I decided what movie to be in, I was like, do I go for the Oscar, which I already have, or do I go for the hundred and ninety million dollars? <laughs> uh, can you just do an entire episode Morgan yeah, Freeman with <laughs> do the Morgan Please Freeman with the entire episode Oscar winner <laughs> and, and I've already Turtle got fan. see what you don't understand is I've already got the Oscar and Let's, well I only have like five years left on this planet and I wanted <laughs> to see if I could spend 190 million dollars in five years <laughs> Let's uh let's let's make a push for Morgan Freeman for Baxter Stockman just so we can hear let's that. Let's start a Twitter campaign. Let's start a Twitter. Oh man, Shredder would put those blades in his face and he'd be like, "Are you serious? Are you bringing that weak blade stuff into my face right now? <laughs> <laughs> you really think that scares me, bitch? I played the freckled man in Robin Hood. You ain't got <laughs> shit <you>. on me." <laughs> Right, painted but, man. Sorry, he was the painted man. Whatever. There you go. Well, let's let's uh, let's officially, well, semi-officially get out of uh, movie news and let's get into some mutated messages. We always like to share our our listener feedback. So we want to give a shout out to uh, uh, another shout out to Adam Whitlatch for uh, sharing the show with his friends on Facebook and uh, writing to us about the Playmates uh, Mirage figures as well. So and and as I said, check him out. He's got a, a great book called The Weller, and he's got a lot of good stuff going on. He's uh, writing the novel for War of the Worlds Goliath. Um, he's got a lot of cool stuff going on. Check him out. Yep. Nice. Uh, Gary uh, Rickleman sent us a. Uh, <laughs> Finally, a last name Ryan can say. Yep. Barely. It says, uh, just a heads up about IDW's uh, Ninja Turtle Adventure Series. Uh, the first, I think, two issues were based on TV episodes, but since then, each issue has been its own self-contained original story. Really fun, and they feel like TV episodes. 
Uh, also, the last couple have included a special ongoing Lego Ninja Turtle story. I definitely Wait, who is this? recommend the Which series. one are we reading? I love them as an adult, and my students are mesmerized by them. So that's uh, great. Yeah, because we haven't, none of us have really gotten into the Ninja Turtle Adventure series uh, from IDW. Because mm-hmm. I assumed that it was just going to be based off the TV show, like the first two up, the first two issues were. But apparently, it's gone uh, gone rogue, and uh, apparently, the stories are pretty good. So, thanks, Gary. Thanks for the uh, for the recommendation. Woo! Uh, David McDonald. Uh, he's uh, over there in. Uh, Jolly old England. That's terrible. Uh, 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 and he, really, he I'm not. Said, I'm not. I'm not uh, in David or or England. I'm uh, in the news that he gave us. Uh, so uh, hey, he says, hey guys, just wanted to drop a line saying how much uh, he enjoys listening to the show, and he's constantly updating his podcast app in hope app in hope of a new episode. Can't talk. Uh, thanks for the entertainment, and oh, by the way, I just read on a site that there will be a Karai figure, but it may be her mutated form, not her human one. And I believe yeah. that is right. I believe that did come out. So Yeah, we already went over that, and yeah. I went on my rant yeah. of hatred. Yeah. Uh, Squirrelanoids have a toy, but Karai doesn't. I'm, yeah. I, yeah. It's, uh, well, Squirrelanoids, you know, are, you know they, they're much more, uh... I mean, so we also so this is I mean that is cool though that we have listeners over in England we we can add another country to our uh, to our list so um, but he does say uh, love the show and just got these classics uh, we uh, really do need a shredder and a splinter and a Krang in his suit would be really awesome and uh, love the show so he sent us a photo of that he got uh, all of the uh, the classic figures um, the uh, those nice. super articulated ca- uh, classic figures. Not nice. the uh, not the new um, movie ones, but the original ones, the original turtle mm-hmm. ones. And I agree, a shredder and a splinter would be amazing, and a crane in suit that would be awesome. I totally mm-hmm. agree. Uh, he also sent us a video of uh, the turtles visiting in England. I, I think this was at a uh, a Lego Land, I think, in England. I'm not hundred percent sure on that, but. Uh, uh, got a link in the show notes is awesome. uh, for that. It's on uh, Facebook. And uh, he also <laughs> sent us a, a link saying that he's going to be watching Big Trouble in Little China in preparation for the Nick Turtles homage episode. Michelangelo was in the Lego movie. Just gonna barely. Like that. Barely, just, that's yeah. barely. Still in it. They he still was, he were was. like, hey, Michelangelo. And Michelangelo, how you doing? Okay. Uh, Batman was amazing in that movie, by the way. Which is why he's getting his own movie. Will Arnett. Yeah. <laughs> Will Arnett did great. Oh, we got a message from Aaron C. He says, what's up, dudes? I recently d- uh, discovered your podcast, and I'm really enjoying it. It's awesome to be able to listen to a all-TMNT-related podcast. Um, I guess unless Darby Knox go on side tangents about The Flash and whatever. <laughs> I'm sorry we like to talk about other awesome stuff. Uh, uh, that's fair enough. Uh, I thought you guys might appreciate and want to check out some sweet turtles themed shirts and posters. There's a clothing brand called Electric Zombie that recently released some awesome stuff. Maybe you guys have already come across it or have been told about it. Uh, if not, Aaron, do out. you work for Electric Zombie? <laughs> he might. Uh, electriczombie.merchline.com slash collections slash shirts if you're interested. Uh, anyway, I'm looking forward to the next episode. Later, dudes. Uh, later, Aaron. Thank you very much. Uh, I did check it out, and uh, there's some sweet uh, There are so there. many amazing shirts. My favorite, by the way, is the Toga and Razar one. Yeah, what do they say in that one? Because I can't read this. I can't, like, zoom in on the actual shirt. I don't know why. It's not letting me. It says... I'm like, sorry. what is Toka and Razar saying? Uh, well, first, it says foot stinks in the background. And it's graffiti on a wall. Yeah. It has vanilla ice. Vanilla oh, ice. Poster. Yeah. yeah. And Razar says, mmm. And then uh, <laughs> Toka says, num nums. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's nice. nice. Yep. Fantastic. Gosh, I might, I might get that one. That's actually pretty freaking sweet. Oh, my God. The, Donnie, the Donnie, Donnie, like, oh my God. <laughs> eating the Krang? What is, What? That is disturbing and amazing. The Projects Arts. t-shirt, I really like the Projects t-shirt. The one that's on to the right of the, uh, of the, uh... Token Razar? Yeah, the Token Razar yeah. one, because it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's, like, based off, like, the video games. The original. Yeah, it's a cool one. Yeah, uh, anyway. Based uh, on, Alf uh, eating a cat is also very disturbing, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, he always said he was trying to eat the cats. He, he did. He did always say that. I, I agree. It just he I does see. like to eat the put what? Whoa! Whoa! Oh, so, uh, whoa. So Tim, so Tim, whoa. Tim uh, messaged us and uh, he says, "Hey guys." Uh, ah, that's how you get Ryan to move on. <clears throat> writing in to share my thoughts on the movie with you. So he sent us a really long email. I'm, I won't go through all of it, but uh, I, I do appreciate it. We, we read through it all, and uh, so I'll, I'll, sh- I'll share the highlights. Um, he says no, he pretty didn't. much feels the same way that uh, Ryan and Darby feel about it. So, um, yep. First things he didn't like: the Ninjutsu book. We agree. No yep. Hamato Yoshi. Totally agree. The thin plot. Totally agree. Uh, those were his major gripes, but uh, here are the things he really liked about the movie: um, the turtles themselves. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, I think the I think the voice acting did its job. In the movie, uh, the action, he, he says, the action. I, I, yeah, I mean, it's it's got great action. You, you great said he liked the heartfelt speech that Raph gave at the end. You mean when they were plummeting fifty stories and then landed on their feet, perfectly fine, with an antenna strapped well, to their backs? Whether or not it was it was realistic or not, he didn't even realize that they landed. How do you not feel that you landed <laughs> after falling like somewhat like god knows how far i could fall literally off my bed right now and i would be like oh i landed on the ground that's a whole like foot and a half <laughs> and uh, i don't agree with the action I-, I think the action was lackluster and really uh, no i like the action when they were when no. they were going down the mountain that was pretty sweet i'm sorry okay i'll, I'll give you that. that that's one good action scene uh, the rest i mean i, I the, all the fighting scenes were just they were just stupid mm. It was, uh, also, I found out they were bulletproof. Likes, uh, Splinter versus Shredder, Seriously. too. The Splinter versus and, Shredder and fighting. There was no, there was no real need for any sort. I mean, I, they may have. Not no, no, no. Had... Splinter versus Shredder was horrible because there was no backstory to it. Like that should have been so epic. It should have lasted more than thirty seconds, and it should have been Amato Yoshi falling with a Roku Saki and but, like, oh my god, this has been building up for generations, yeah. well, or exactly. this has been building that's, up forever. Yeah, it was just another random fight. That's actually yeah. what he says. He says the only thing holding this fight sequence back from being truly amazing is the fact that we weren't seeing Hamato Yoshi and Roku Saki fighting each other. Just two characters who never met before having this awesome fight. I don't even think it was that awesome of a fight. It really wasn't. So, um, but, he, he you says know, he would, he would give the movie are. a 3 out of 5. Only... Our opinions count. <laughs> Unless you guys disagree with me, in which case it's my opinion that counts. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <Thanks. laughs> really appreciate it. Uh, CK Gilmore uh, on Twitter says, uh, now that he's seen the TMNT movie, you can finally listen to our, spo- our spoiler episode and uh, also watch uh, uh, at Black Nerd's spoiler video as well. Whoa. 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 Yeah. Watch watch it. Uh, That's his Adam, name. Adam it's his name, Gilmore. Alex. Oh, never, <laughs> ne- never mind. Never mind. <laughs> uh, Adam Garen uh, on Twitter, or, or no, it's not on Twitter. Uh, he says, "Hope uh, Alex got his figure." Yeah, I, d- I did, I did. I thought yeah, I tweeted Adam. about that, but thank you, Adam. I'll Adam be Garen. posting pictures about the fish face. Appreciate it. I'm actually looking at it right now. Uh, he says, uh, "I don't know if I'm late to the party on this one, but I saw this commercial today and thought I'd share it with you. It's the, uh, this is the uh, uh, vanilla, vanilla ice, ice. going into go." Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. No, it's it's great. That's that's a great. <laughs> the, the mom being so awkward. <laughs> <laughs> so awkward. <laughs> well, you know, you know that's how it would be. If you had kids, like, and you sure. saw Vanilla Ice stocking in the grocery aisle, you'd be nerding out with Vanilla Ice Absolutely. while your kid just looks at you like, Absolutely. what? Absolutely. Yep. Uh, Rochelle Norlin, our uh, longtime listener, Rochelle, uh, Rochelle Norlin, says, uh, I saw the uh, special before. This is referencing a, a episode. Sorry. And a Nick yes, episode. An episode of the, of the uh, animated series. Uh, she says, I saw the special before on Nick.com, and it was very shocking that Leo got hurt by the Shredder. Same with Splinter, too. Still, Karai slash Miwa, in her snake form, saved Splinter's life when Splinter was uh, in the water. Uh, f- for the new e- the episodes coming, I hope Donatello could tell April on how he really feels about falling in love. Because April has no idea. They do make a wonderful couple. <laughs> David Thompson at TMNT713 on Twitter says, I have the new interactive turtles, and they do have the Nick Turtles voice cast. You remember nice. when we talked about these? Oh. Uh, he provides a photo. Uh, we talked about these uh, interactive turtles. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So uh, and we weren't sure if they had the, uh, the actual voice cast, but turns out they do. Thanks, David. Shout out to uh, David Thompson's uh, background wallpaper. 
It's uh, interesting. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Fat Pat, Big Mo. Little Kiki. <laughs> Kiki, my boy. Ugh. Um, let's see. Tiger Claw. Uh, he uh, uh, he sent us some photos. Uh, we were we were talking about our uh, our turtles uh, uh, t-shirts, and uh, he sent us some photos of his uh, of his. So uh, he only has his... two. <laughs> <laughs> only two. That's cute. Uh, that is very cute. We got some uh, new reviews on iTunes. Uh, <laughs> this, I love this guy's name. Gangsta's never met me. That is a great name, especially because Never has no E's in it. Yep. Uh, he says, this is a great TMNT podcast that every fan should listen to. They're funny and know a lot about the TMNT universe. Thank you. And J Knight 5 he says, I've been looking for a great Ninja Turtles podcast for a while, and now the search is over. Turtle Power Podcast is a great listen for any Ninja Turtles fan, and all the hosts are very funny, except for Darby, and entertaining, uh, except for Darby. Uh, uh, three, first of all, it three, doesn't say except for Darby, uh, and uh, no? screw yeah. you, because at the end, what does he say? And are uh, providing the latest news on all things Ninja Turtles, Bossa Nova. Yeah. Bossa Nova! <laughs> yeah. What up? Darby is an integral part of this uh, podcast and could never be replaced. Who it says doesn't that? Say that. It doesn't say it. It doesn't say that at all. It actually it doesn't say that. <laughs> it doesn't say that at all. No. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's going to do it for uh, the show, guys. All right, uh, later. I, I do want to mention one thing, too, really quick, though. Man, Alex really has somewhere <laughs> important action, to action, <laughs> Just got action, uh, for, for the uh, action figure giveaway, uh, I am sending those out today. So Woo! Uh, I'm still haven't sent those out. I am terrible. I was in you Japan. in the land of ninjutsu, I was Alex. in the land of the rising sun. Weren't you listening like two hours ago when we first started this podcast? Yes. It's not like Jess was went with you. She was at home. Oh, she, no, she didn't. All right. Uh, Same, man. Huh? I'm throwing Alex, you under the bus. Alex, guess what? It is your lucky day. You get to give us the rundown. Ah. Uh, see, you're never ready for it. Even when he bottom. throws it at me, I'm like, wait, what? Yep. Where's the rundown? All the way oh. to the bottom. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. All right. So... Check us out on our official website, www.turtlepowerpodcast.com. Follow us on Twitter at TMNT Podcast. Follow Ryan at Fig Don Pat. That's F I G D O N P A T. Follow myself at A Rodriguez2005. And follow the always comical Darby at Darby T Patton. That's P A T O N on Ooh. Twitter. Like us on Facebook uh, at facebook.com forward slash Turtle Power Podcast. Subscribe on YouTube, www.youtube.com, in case you didn't know, uh, forward slash Turtle Power Podcast. Share your feedback with us via email at turtlepowerpodcast at gmail.com, and subscribe and rate us on iTunes, or we will kill you. Uh, iTunes.apple.com, <laughs> forward slash US, forward slash podcast, forward slash turtle. You don't have to uh, do all that. <laughs> <laughs> here, here, I'll do it. Ready, ready, ready? Hey, subscribe. Go, go, go. No, no, no. Subscribe and rate us on yes. iTunes. HTTP. I believe that's a colon followed by two slanty lines. Right. iTunes.apple.com iTunes slash US slash podcast slash turtle dash power dot podcast slash ID five three three one oh one extra three sorry it's ID five three 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 one six nine six zero Oh God, that's amazing! So when I we first into, saw Andy before... Dufresne, I really didn't think much of him. <laughs> Shawshank reference, fantastic! <laughs> oh man! Before we get into the uh, song of the show, I do want to mention that good God, the the world is coming to an end because coming out of their shells, the album has now hit iTunes. It's been on Spotify forever, and it's one of my lists. On my spot, I have a Spotify account, and it's one of my playlists. Is the entire yeah? No, I have it. So this this happened, and it is out there. Uh, check uh, check the link in the show notes, uh, or um, just search for it on iTunes or Amazon. Yep, it, it happened. It's uh, ten bucks. Dude, it's been on Spotify forever. I've yeah. Is it the high quality versions though? Oh, it's high quality, baby. Okay. It is. It is legit. I've always had the, the you know the, the cassette tape you know rip. Closing out with the song of the show is once again we're uh, we're we're digging into because <laughs> we the... have to do free music. <laughs> Absolutely, we have to. Uh, the, the uh, we're gonna be 
we're going to be going through this album forever. This forever. is the, the great shell shocked uh, album from uh, OC Remix. This is going to be knock, track. Knock, you are about to get shell shocked. No, definitely not that. Mm-hmm. This is track six Turtle in the Shredder's Shadow. Uh, this is uh, arranged by Megalanic, I believe is how you pronounce that. And this comes from uh, uh, Hyperstone Heist Shredder's Hideout level. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you so much for listening. For Darby and Alex, this is Ryan. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.